Now, one of the common questions which I get at this stage is that neural networks have been around since 1960s. So they're not new. In fact, I know of people who have used neural networks for algorithmic trading back in 1980s. And if you think about it, deep learning is basically a more complex or deeper neural network. So remember how deep learning represents complex concepts as a hierarchy of simple concepts, right? Now, each level of this hierarchy is basically a layer in neural network. So if neural networks have been around for such a long time, why is it that deep learning has become so popular in recent times among data science? So that's a question which I very commonly get. So I thought I'll address that in this video. So this popularity of deep learning is being driven by various forces in industry. And the first force and the first force driving this popularity of deep learning is the force of huge amount of data being created and being used to train deep learning algorithms. So let me go a bit deeper into it. According to a study done by Fortune, the data which exists in this universe is growing exponentially. And this study estimates that by 2025, we would have 180 zettabytes of data generated by IoT. And that's four times of the size which it was in 2020. So in a matter of five years, the amount of data has grown by 4x. So that's the kind of explosion which we are seeing in the data which is getting generated. Now data generation is obviously one part of the story. Once you generate data, you need to store it. And that's the second factor within the data story that the storage costs are actually reducing very significantly. So in 2010, it would cost you to store one GB of data. It would cost you five dollars. So in 2010, if you were to store one GB of data, it would cost you five dollars. Whereas in 2020, this cost has come down to less than a cent. And this will reduce further by one tenth in the next five years. So the cost of storing this data has become very, very cheap and we are generating a lot of data. And hence, any algorithm which becomes better with more data will naturally become a better choice for building these models. And that's why deep learning adoption is actually increasing. But once you have the data, you obviously also need computational resources to work on that data. And that's exactly the next factor in driving this popularity. So the next force in driving this popularity is the rise of computational resources. And what do I mean by that? So again, if you look at the computational power which is available to people today, it has become thousand times more faster for the same amount spent. So if I were spending $1 in 2015, the power which I was getting, I can get thousand times faster computations in the same cost today in a matter of five years. And this trend again is going to continue. So for the same spend, I can get a lot more compute power today. But the story does not stop here. What happens is not only you have more compute power, you also have different types of hardware which are specifically engineered to build deep learning models and do a lot of computations in parallel. So GPUs and TPUs, which have become the main computing sources for deep learning recently, have actually revolutionized how much computations you can do. And they can run massive parallel operations to deliver results in deep learning. Here are some of the options of cloud providers which provide you this hardware on the cloud. So as an end user, you don't need to make any significant upfront investments if you want to perform deep learning. So what this enables is people who want to do deep learning, they can actually go out and run your deep learning algorithms on these cloud providers without making upfront capital investments. So large masses can now come and use these cloud providers for performing their deep learning operations. Along with that, there has been a rise in the different type of libraries. So each of these libraries actually provide you with standard 
ways to build deep learning models, which essentially helps more and more people do deep learning modeling without writing the same piece of code again and again. So each of these libraries come with pre-built packages, which you can use to build deep learning models faster and quicker. In addition to the data and computational resources, the third driving force for popularity of deep learning has been the industry adoption and the applications which are being driven by deep learning. So as mentioned before, neural networks were available for a long time, but they were not providing the desired results in industry. However, this changed significantly once we had more data and computational resources. So with increased chances of success, several industries are now either already using deep learning algorithms or are experimenting with them to get better results in the problems which they are facing. So let me cover a few examples to show how deep learning is changing the world. So the first example is self-driving cars, and I'm sure you would have heard about this. So all self-driving vehicles are actually driven by deep learning algorithms, which in real time see what is there on the road, identify the object, and then tell the car what needs to be done. Similarly, in healthcare, these deep learning algorithms are helping with detection of several kinds of cancer, and they are also assisting doctors in reading X-ray images. AI assistants, so all your AI assistants use deep learning algorithms to understand what is the user need, what is the user saying, and then searching for those results to give you the right assistance. Deep learning has also, deep learning has also just transformed how people use smartphones and use it in various applications. So this could be language translation while you are either uh, roaming in a different country or these could be real-time translation which you need while talking to other people in these countries. And any industry you take from education to space exploration today is using deep learning algorithms to create new breakthroughs to find solutions to problems which were difficult to solve for machines in past era. So those are some of the examples which show how applications of deep learning are transforming several industries. So that was the third force. And the final force is the kind of research which is happening and has happened in the last few years in the area of deep learning and machine learning. So if you look at the number of published papers in AI, it has actually grown 4x from where it was. So we were uh, publishing about 5,000 papers in AI in 2005. By 2018, we almost published 20,000 papers on AI. Now, obviously, the quantity of papers is one metric, but it is also what these papers are trying to do. A lot of these papers are related to research on how to make these deep learning algorithms more efficient. So things like transfer learning, which we'll talk about later in this course, and more recently approaches for one-shot learning have been some of the areas where a lot of active research has helped gaining efficiencies in deep learning. So research continues to drive a lot of new breakthroughs, which enable industries to use these again. So between industrial applications and research, you see a lot of interaction and one thing leads to other and combined, they actually drive the popularity of deep learning. So these are the four forces which essentially are driving the popularity of deep learning. And I hope you are now as excited about deep learning as I am and of the possibilities which it unfolds. What are some of the problems which you would want to solve using deep learning? Let me know these problems through the comments. 